what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're doing over the wire and it's gonna be on natus level 16 so when you finish this level we're gonna move on to level 17 so basically this level is somewhat similar to the previous level in that we have to perform a blind SQL injection attack on the application with a slight difference if you take a look at the source code and scrolling down here as you can see we have this filter starting with the if statement and we have these characters that are prohibited as you can see some of these characters are used in injection statements like the double quotes the single quotes and the back uh, the backslash also you have the pipe characters all of these characters are filtered so if you attempt some sort of SQL injection using these characters, um, it's not gonna work. Additionally, guys, we have the pass through function. So most probably we're gonna take advantage of this function. The pass through function here is executing grep on the key. The key here is the input taken from the user. And it is comparing that to the text file, dictionary.txt. If there is a match, it will display that. If there is no match, it won't. So it is somewhat similar to the previous level, right? So if you go back here and we try some like test and we search. So as you can see, we have this uh, word mentioned in the um, dictionary, as you can see here, like this sad. I mean, it's only enough that the test is part of the word. It doesn't have to be uh, on its own, right? Um, so if you type something like um, latest, so I have only one match. So when there is a match, it displays the output. When there is no match, it doesn't do that. All right, so let's go back to the source code here. Let's see if we can, let's see a, a way we can um, get around this. So if you notice closely, guys, we have the ampersands and the dollar sign are missing from the filter. And if you search for command substitution, so in command substitution, what happens, we inject a command using dollar sign and two ampersands looks like I have difficulties opening the page let's see here okay this one worked so in command substitution we use the dollar sign and we use two ampersands okay uh, sorry two uh, parentheses and between them goes the command so what happens the output of the command replaces the command itself so the command gets executed that's the first step. And the next step, the output of the command will be replaced or will replace the command itself. So we'll have the output of the command at the end uh, returned back to us. So here, if we, as you can see in the filters, the filter doesn't contain the parentheses and the dollar sign, which means we can use them. Let's display a simple example. Uh, if we try uh, the example of gripping or Let's see uh, this. Okay, so two percent and then here. So we grip a etc natus underscore web pass natus seventeen. I believe the best way to explain that is we use a text editor. So we're gonna touch test. I'm going to open this file. Okay, so that's the first thing. As you can see here, guys, I'm using the dollar sign and two parentheses to indicate I want to use command substitution. So what happens here, we use the grip to see if native 17 file, which is the uh, password file, contains the character or the word, or sorry, the, 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 the letter A. So if the letter A exists, okay, it should return the output if it doesn't exist it should not but going by the logic of the according to the logic of this application here 
if there is a match there will be no output okay so if you go back and we take this so if a exists in negative 17 there shouldn't be any re results back to uh, in, the, in the browser let's go back and try it as you can see we can see all of the letters or the words that contain the letter a and we have some of them that really don't contain the letter a for example look take a look at this celsius and brown these words don't contain the letter a okay which means that this uh, this is kind of contradicts the logic of this so if a doesn't exist in area 17 there shouldn't be any output okay um, however we are getting an output which means that if we want to use an sql injection we want to take this into consideration if the injection was successful there will be no output and if the injection is not successful there will be an uh, there will be output that's how it's going to work to prove that let's try with b and we go back see now there is no output which means that b indeed exists in native 17 file since this is a blind sql injection that's how we're gonna uh, follow the, uh, solve the challenge so we're gonna rely on the uh, feedback from the application if there is a feedback we're gonna we're gonna conclude that the injection wasn't successful if there wasn't any feedback like an output here it means the injection was successful and we're going to add that with the password so what we get what, what's the ob objective here remember that the objective is to guess the password of meta 17 meaning we want to we know that the password is here but we want to find it or extract it therefore we want to try every single character b a c d all of them and see if there is an output uh, or no output and based on that we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, say yes this character is part of the password and this character is not part of the password so for to do that I uh, just use the same script that I used in the last challenge so if we open the script file Okay, so first we define the URL, the username and the password, the previous level, and then we define the variable characters, which will hold all of the letters, string and digits that could be part of the password. And then we have, and then we define the password array, which will contain the real password. And then we have two for loops, one to iterate. 34 times because 34, 34 is the number of characters that compose the password and then we have an inner for loop that goes through every single character in the variable characters okay and we store that in the uh, variable char next we have the url variable that we defined which will contain the output of the grep command the grep command here will check if the characters index 1 and 2 passed from uh, the for loop okay are found at the very beginning of the password in a 17 this is accomplished by using the regular expression here this one to check if there is a match or if the characters here are found at the very beginning of the passwords in a 17 if there is a match then there will be it will return the uh, word or uh, whatever it is the password mentioned in the 17 as an output it will be the output and therefore the output will replace the command as per the, the command substitution that we use here and then this command will be checked or this password sorry or this output will be stored in the URL okay and then it will be added of course to the password so then the URL variable is checked in this if statement if it does contain the word testing sorry if it doesn't contain the word testing the character here that we tried earlier 
in the script statement will be added to the password. And that's how in every iteration we add the correct character that's really part of the password. Now why we use testing here? Because if the grip command doesn't return any output, it means that the characters do not exist in the password in data 17. So when there is no output, there will be only testing part of the URL. So it's a kind of criteria we use to uh, find out if the grip command returned an output or not. So if it does, if it doesn't, if it didn't return an output, testing will be the only thing part of the in the URL variable. Therefore, if testing is found in the uh, R text which contains the user and password in addition to the URL variable, then we will not go into the if statement. Therefore, we will not add the character that didn't return an output from data 17. So if you go now and execute this, so assuming now it is iterating through characters, so it's found it, it found this one x, and then it found k. All of these were part of the correct password. And these were the output of the grep statement we demonstrated earlier. As you can see. Now it's gonna on it's gonna go on and on until it find it finds the correct password or the complete password. So the script finished executing and as you can see here we have this password. Let's go ahead and try it. We're going to head to Neta 17. Uh, okay. All right. So, copy the link. And it took me directly here because uh, I have kind of kind of saved the password in the browser but anyway guys this is the password for the next level and in the next video we're going to go over the next level and see what we can learn thank you for watching